So you know how I said I just hate like first startup time? It's already happening. I'll show you what's going on. Dumping coolant in it and we've already got a leak. So, well the plan was take all of the crankcase and oil pan covers off because I never had those permanently installed and we can have good looks inside the crankcase and everything to make sure we don't have anything leaking internally. All was well. We're probably not quite half full of coolant. And then I saw a trail developing over here. So we look up to the base up in there. You can see it coming down. Two possibilities. The more horrifying one would be that O-ring seal between the engine block and the bell housing. Thankfully, it's coming from, I don't know if you're gonna pick it up on camera, but it's coming from up here at the starting engine base gasket. So, pony's coming back off. Yeah, that didn't take long. So, like I said before, I've never hit a home run on one of these. I've, <laughs> I haven't done it once. There's always been something I've had to go back in and redo. So here's the first one. Thankfully, it's not horrible, but it's still another delay. So, you know, like I said before, this is where you see exactly where you really are. Um, one step forward, two steps back. We took half a step forward. I got a half full of coolant and we found our first leak. So, and that's even with brand new gaskets. I put tons of sealer on that base gasket because we had a little bit of pitting going on. It shouldn't have been bad enough to cause a leak despite all that. Still, we got something going on. So, well, I guess we'll find out. Epic fail. I gotta get busy. <laughs> so it's a couple of hours later everything's apart i've had a good look and show you what i found so here's the old gasket right here ignore that rip i did that when i was taking it off but you can see how we had good contact everywhere except for right through here you can see the sealer that i've put on there with my finger i didn't even get enough clamp load in this whole area right here to even take those marks out of it so we had a poor contact issue going on now that it's stuck on the studs again there we are and just to well have another look at things i cleaned everything back off here check this with the straight edge top of the bell housing is absolutely flat and i did run a flat file across the base of the starting engine to make sure we didn't have any high spots or burrs but then i did find that right through here that block kind of dives up a little bit so that accounts for the lack of sealing in that area right there. Of course, this is the water passage right there. So we had just a little bit of seepage coming out, running down the side of the bell housing. And it's got nothing to do with those T-joints for that front cover. They are all good. Besides, everything locates so tightly on that idler gear hub shaft that that's not causing the problem. So two options here. The first one that we're not going to do is strip this engine back down to uh, have this base surface milled. We ain't gonna worry about that. At least not right off the bat. So what I'm gonna do, I made my own gasket slightly thicker and hoping it's gonna have some more compressibility than this cat factory gasket did. Plus we're gonna back it up with a little bit extra goop in this whole area right here. We'll put it all back in and see what happens. Okay, everybody, starting engines back in place. Got the whole base resealed. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm not gonna put anything else together, though, until we know that we're watertight. So for the time being, all that stuff's gonna stay right there on the bench. It's gonna be a couple days, though, before I can try putting coolant in it again, because, well, during the fray, I also noticed that the petcock that's on the side of the diesel block right about here, that's the low point for drain for the water jacket and the starting engine. This was an original that I decided to reuse because it looked good. And it was also starting to form a little bit of a drip where that tapered seat meets the body. And because this is a quarter inch pipe thread down here, I don't have anything that's that size that I could just put in. So we got that ordered up. This is Wednesday as we're recording this right now, hoping to see it by this Friday so that we can get rolling again for the weekend. I could put a pipe plug in there just to fill it up to see if we had leaks but then I'd have to drain it back down to take the plug out to put the new petcock in. I'm just gonna wait and do it all at one shot. So that's the plan moving forward. Yes, today could have been a lot better, but we also have to remind ourselves that it always could have been a lot worse because 
every cloud does have a silver lining. Um, this was a setback, but fortunately it wasn't a horrible one. I have plenty of starting engine options. Even if this doesn't pan out, I've got a plan B, I've got a plan C. And it was pretty minor. It was like an hour to get the starting engine back off. And it's not going to be much more than that to put all those parts back on if it holds water. So really wasn't the end of the world. If we would have had like a bell housing problem though, that could have gotten pretty severe pretty fast because, well, even if it would have been that O-ring on the passage between the diesel and the bell housing, I still would have had to take it off, which means the flywheel has to come off. The starting pinion should probably come out. And well, we'd have to heavily retool the whole engine stand because the bell housing is like the whole back end support. So we would have been building other adapters and it would have got pretty bad pretty fast. And if it would have been a problem with the bell housing, I don't have any more good ones either. So we'd have really been down until I could get something better. So all in all, I guess I'm pretty happy with how it all shook out today anyhow. Assuming we have the leak fixed, we'll know in a couple days. But now you're starting to see like why I don't really like first start time. It's <laughs> There's always problems like this and we're likely only at the tip of the iceberg yet. You know, it comes with the territory when you're trying to rehab 70, 80 year old machines. They're not new anymore. And even though we've tried everything we can to make them new, it is just what it is. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Till next time.